What's up, everybody? It's the Alex Leak and Friends College Football Podcast, back for another episode. This will be the week six preview. We got Dustin on the show as always. What's up, Dustin? Hey, thanks for having me. Yeah, good to have you on. And we got my Uncle Dean back on to talk some college football and his great numbers system. Good to have you on, Dean. Yeah, it's great to be back with you guys. Uh, it's, uh, you know, another wonderful world of sports. <laughs> yeah, and uh, just doing my prep for this episode and looking at the rankings and stuff, this is going to be a great episode. A lot to talk about. And so we're getting into my favorite part of the season. When, uh, you know, you start to get those conference rivalry games and you've got – it's starting to thin out the crowd. There's only a certain amount of undefeated teams left. It's my favorite part of the season, to be honest. Yeah, there's 16 undefeated teams left. Yep. So, narrowing getting, up. Yeah, getting good. Um, Let's start off. So, in uh, your numbers ranking, it has Alabama number one. And that's the same as what uh, the college football has it as. Yes. Well, that's only a coincidence. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, they have favored Alabama and Georgia all year. So they've been at the top the whole season. This is the first time Alabama's topped the list in yeah. the numbers. Yep. Sitting at 5-0. and oh. And what do you think? Dean, in your opinion, like according to your numbers and stuff, what is putting Bama number one? Is it, you know, the road wins over Texas and Arkansas is, what, is what's doing it? Yeah, they have had uh, the best quality wins uh, yeah. so far. Yep. And not that, not that they've been playing any great teams because, you know, Arkansas, you know, uh, it looked to me like they were overrated. Mm -hmm. You know, but still uh, a pretty good team. Um, yeah. So, you know, I, I all the rest of the teams have had um, their, most of their schedule, they uh, have played, I would say, mediocre teams mostly. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that all adds into the evaluation. It's not just one big win. What do you think? Dustin, what do you think of Bama being number one in, in uh, you know, the regular rankings and in this one? I mean, you know, it makes sense because, you know, you mentioned they had those two big wins against Texas and Arkansas, but not only did they win against Arkansas, but they had a freshman, a true freshman quarterback come in against Arkansas, and as soon as Bryce Young went down and still dominated. So, like, yeah, yeah they Alabama, just kept rolling, yeah. Yeah, you know, and then um, real quick, I, I wanted to listen there. So, like, Georgia, I wouldn't expect them to be one with the way that they've struggled with Kent State and then last week with Missouri. Mm hmm So you yeah. think it makes sense that Bama should be one ahead of Georgia? Yeah, absolutely. And, um, Dean, what do you think? I mean, so they're number one, but they're, you know, top quarterback in the country. Uh, Bryce Young gets injured, uh, his, his shoulder, and is considered day-to-day. -day. But that freshman came in and looked pretty good himself. I mean, that's the thing about the SEC and Bama especially, that great depth that they always have. Yeah, it just seems like they just pull the next guy off the bench, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, well, what do you, you know, think? When, when you're a program like that, you're going to draw a talent. If they will stick around – you know, maybe they'll get their opportunity, you know. Yeah. Did you see that um, off-season drama between, go, you know, words back and forth between Jimbo Jimbo Fisher and Nick Saban? Uh, no, I, not really. There, it was – you saw that, Dustin, right? Oh, absolutely. I'm going to love that game this Saturday. <laughs> and the, Texas A&M beat them last year, but – I mean, I don't know that that, that A and M has much of a shot tomorrow, do they? Uh, you know, A and M seems to be a, a thorn in the back of Nick Saban. Yeah, you know, I mean, they've upset him what three times already since they've been in the in the top three. I mean, you know, so I just think that it's 
every coach has that one team that just, you know, they can't seem to get over the hump of. And I think that's Nick Saban with Texas A&M. Yeah, the, they are in Alabama's head. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it, so do you think, I mean, a lot of people are thinking you should be careful with Bryce Young and let him get fully healthy for the Tennessee game and sit him against A&M. But do you think because AM has had Bama's number, they're going to play Bryce Young? What do you think, Dean? Well, I, I think the first comment was, was probably best. They, uh, I, I would think that setting him and just letting him get 100% would be smarter. I mean, the younger guy has proved himself. Um, yeah. And if he doesn't do well, you've got Bryce as the backup. Yeah, I mean, that's how, what I was. How thinking. can you go wrong? <laughs> yeah, I was thinking start the kid and then bring in Bryce if you're like losing or something, you know? Yeah. yeah Wait, I, do you agree, do you agree with that, Dustin? Um, I do to a certain point. I mean, you know, uh, this is is the game in? I believe the game's in Tuscaloosa, right? Um. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, okay. You know, it'd be cool to start the the true freshman, but you are definitely going to need Bryce Young for Tennessee because that team down there in Knoxville, in my opinion, is the real deal. Yeah, yeah. so if you can if you can get away with sitting Bryce Young for a game just to make sure he's fully healthy, that's what I would do. Um, but, I mean, can, can they win, Dustin, in your opinion, can they win? Do you think they win if they start the freshman? Or is it a, is it a close game? Do you think it gets a little, you know, scary if you start the freshman? I mean, I think it's going to be, you know, a, a close game given the fact that it's Texas A&M and Alabama anyway, you know. Yeah. They, A&M always seems to want to show up against Alabama for some reason. So, regardless who starts, it's going to be a game. But at the end of the day, I think Bama pulls it out. And, Dean, real quick, so I saw a graphic today comparing Kevin Sumlin's first couple years in A&M and Jimbo Fisher, and they're very similar. And a lot of people, you know, Jimbo Fisher was brought in to take the next step to get to the top of the SEC. What do you think of Jimbo Fisher and the job he's doing at A&M? I think he's doing uh, as well as he can. Um, yeah. You go back through the years. Uh, has always been competitive, but they've never been great, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. So uh, to to try to get him into to the category of an Alabama, I, I don't know if that's even possible. Yeah, I don't care who the coach is. <laughs> you got to draw the guys in. You got to have the players, you know. Uh, and yeah. he's he's getting. Um, you know, from great talent, but it's hard to match that uh, that team. And, <laughs> you know, that just seems to want to roll. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if anyone is, is maybe catching Bama, it's Georgia. Then that's about it. And I don't know if they've fully caught them yet, you know? So uh, can I say this real quick, yeah. Alex? Yeah. So uh, Jimbo Fisher is a good coach, but, you know, I – I don't think he's an SEC caliber coach. I mean, you know, he won his national championship when, you know, at Florida State when it was a down year for Alabama and the SEC, you know. So I feel like mm, he's kind of a little un, under, you know, performing as a head coach in my opinion. Man, famous Jameis was going to beat anybody in, in his way that freshman year. That's all I got to say, Dustin. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, I was a big fan of his in college. But So going number two is Penn State. That's a pretty cool uh, number two in your number system. They were number 10 in the FBS. Uh, now they're number two um, in, on here. Do you like Penn State? Do you like seeing Penn State up that high, Dean? Again, it's uh, what they've done on the field. Yeah, uh, you can't argue with their 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 uh, performance. So I mean, that's really the thing. Again, the numbers look at you know uh, the, the 
competition and and how you played the games. What did you think? And, uh, did, did you watch that uh, Purdue at Auburn or uh, Penn State at Auburn game? Did I? Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, what did you think of Penn State watching that game? What did I think of Penn State? Yeah. Um, I wasn't overly impressed, but you know they took care of business. Mm -hmm. Um. In their, you know, in a hostile situation. So, I, I don't know. I, I think that um, Penn State still has to prove itself. Yeah. And the schedule will will allow that. Yeah. So, you know, the numbers are just recognizing them for what they've done now. Yeah. Uh, they, they still got uh, plenty of challenges. Yes. They got a bye week, and then they got at Michigan, and then two weeks yeah. later at, at Ohio State. Yeah. Okay, so I got a smoking hot take for you guys. <laughs> okay. Penn State goes into the big house and upsets the Michigan Wolverines. I I don't think that's a bad take. What do you think, Dean? Is that doable? I think it's doable. I, I, I've seen other people go into the big house and uh, – knock off the Wolverines um, and their talent probably wasn't as good as Penn State is. Let me yeah. tell you, that Penn State defense is for real. Okay, yeah. that's that's a for real defense over there. And they have a freshman, Nicholas Singleton, who is, I think, all but one game rushed for over 100 yards this season as a freshman. Yeah. I really like that Joey Porter Jr., their corner. Uh, I think – He's going to be a stud in the NFL even, too. He's a he's a great player. Yeah, and when in doubt, you got to go with defense. Uh, you always got to lean that direction when it's a, a, a dogfight. Yeah, absolutely. So we're going to find out a ton about Penn State in the next four weeks. Yes. Um, you know, I mean, I think, Dustin, even you agree, if they can pull off the win in Michigan, awesome. But I doubt that they can win both of these games on the road against, you know, against the Buckeyes too. You know, you never know, man. All I'm saying is they have the defense to do it, and defense win ball games or defense yeah. win ball games. I'll be rooting for them. No, no right. doubt about that. Well, the psyche says, you know, that that's not going to happen. You know, they, you got Michigan and Ohio State, and they're on top, and they're all wonderful and great. And we don't know anything about Penn State. Mm -hmm. So they may just uh, have a lot more than what we uh, realize. Yeah. You know, Absolutely. I mean, you know, that's that's why you got to play the games. Yeah. I mean, to go into Jordan Hare, regardless, being a Big Ten team, you're going on the road to yeah. You know, yeah. Auburn at Jordan Hare, and you play Auburn, you know, and you beat them, that's not easy to do. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Now this is this is my favorite uh, team in the top ten right here. As far as I'm really high on this team this year. You got number three USC. They're number six, but in your numbers, they're number three. Bro. And I really, I really like USC this year. What do you think, Dean, about what the Trojans have done so far? Well, again, uh, I think the numbers really appreciated their uh, beating the heck out of Oregon State. Yeah. Who was, who was rated up there for a while. Beat them when they were undefeated. So, you know, I mean, again, none of the teams uh, really have resumes right now that you can say these are the elite teams. Yeah. They've all kind of played a bunch of people uh, and won a couple of decent games you know we're we're heading into the prove it stage of the season right now yes we are yeah yeah that's my favorite time of the year what yes. do you think what do you think dustin i'm super high on usc i love to see them you know having success in year one uh with lincoln riley yeah i mean you know of course the offense is very explosive but what scares me man is that defense they're ranked like 90-something or 80-something, I believe, in, you know, giving up points and all that. They're just not very good on defense. And if you face a team with an offense who can score, they're going to be in trouble. 
But here's a stat that I do like about their defense is if you're not going to play good, like, statistic defense and give up points, what do you have to do? You have to take the ball away. Yeah. And USC, USC right now leads the country in interceptions. Wow. That, that's a stat I didn't know, but, you know, that is right. You do have to, you know. Well, if you're not going to stop anybody, you have to at least take the ball away, right, you know? Absolutely. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> So we'll see. They're also got prove it games. They got Washington State, which they should win. You know, they need to not like take that matchup for granted, not be looking ahead to a big matchup next week at Utah. Ooh, yep. ooh. They have to go to Salt Lake yeah. City. Ooh, that's tough. Yeah. So yeah. um Yeah, I, I mean bold prediction right here. Tell me if you guys agree. Dean, what do you think? I've got USC winning the Pac-12 this year. Oh, my. Um, <laughs> <laughs> right now, I, right now, I'd agree with you. Yeah. Um, but, again, you've got other teams that are um, – they're just as hungry and just as tough. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, even UCLA. I mean, you can't yeah. count them out. Yeah. We were talking yeah, about yeah. Utah and and yeah. even Washington, but um, yeah, I mean, I, right now I would say that that's who I would select if I was going to, you know, take a bet. <laughs> and their quarterback's Caleb Williams, right, Dustin? Yeah. Yes. So, I see. I think if you give USC like a young star quarterback, just playing at USC, getting out to a hot five and zero start. That could be all the momentum they need to go eleven and one. You know what I mean? Yeah, I I agree, but I disagree with you about them winning the Pac-12. I think Utah has bounced back from beating Florida, mm -hmm. and you know I just think Utah is a better football team, and we'll find that out next week, obviously. Um, but. Also, Oregon, since they got blasted by Georgia, they've been beating the doors off of people. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So keep an yeah. eye on the Ducks. You're not going to like a take I have coming up here in a, in a couple of minutes, Dustin, but but that I like what you're saying there. Um, Dean, Ohio State, number four in your rankings, number three in, in you know, the actual, um, you know, win over Notre Dame, win over Wisconsin. I noticed every game Ohio State's played so far this year has been at home. Yeah. <laughs> How nice, huh? Yeah, it must be nice. <laughs> um, but they finally go on the road this week to East Lansing to take on my Spartans. They should be able to take care of business, but keep an eye on that game because it's a rivalry. You never know. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, it just looks like that team is focused right now. Um, yeah, they're they're going to be uh, they're going to be hard to knock off. And you say you know they beat Wisconsin, but you know, come on. Yeah, I mean, even even they beat Notre Dame. Come on, really? I mean, <laughs> you can't give them any more. The numbers did give them credit for beating teams that uh, at one time were thought well of. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but you know they they uh, again they still they they had still. Prove themselves. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, um, yeah. Dustin, what do you think of Ohio State being number four? Uh, on on your uncle's point system, um, you know, I think it's fair. You know, being number three in the country, I think it's fair too. But Ohio State, to me, is a pretty damn good football team. Yeah, yeah. I think if it comes down to it, they're the they're one of the only teams. If it comes to the playoffs, that can beat Alabama. Yeah. Ohio State, Bama, Ohio State, Georgia would be some great playoffs. If there's yeah. any team, though, that Ohio State chokes on, it's the SEC. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> Their biggest wouldn't... thing, I think Ohio State's focused on uh, – getting revenge on Michigan as well and win the Big Ten. I think that's their, oh, yeah. you know, 
but yeah. they need to be careful at Penn State coming up in a couple weeks as well. Yeah. Ooh, Happy Valley at night, whiteout. Ooh, we. I know. Yeah. Interesting, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Michigan at number five. Uh, you know, undefeated. You know, I don't see at Iowa as their best win so far. But, you know, they're they're going into the prove-it stage. You know, a lot of these teams have played, you know, easy cupcake schedule to this point, maybe one or two challenges. Exactly. That's kind of the, all of them right now. Yeah. Um, what do you think of Michigan, though? Do, do you think, I mean, uh, versus Penn State at Columbus, those are the two big ones. I mean, I just don't see them. I know they're off to a hot start. I don't think they go into Columbus and win. What do you think, Dustin? So, uh, which team are you talking about? Sorry about that. Michigan. Oh, um, you know, Michigan to me, so they've come down to earth. They were averaging 55 points a game, you know, obviously playing Colorado State, Hawaii, and, you know, Connecticut. But I just think that, when they start to face better competition, they're going to get exposed a little bit. Yeah. Um, I think they, yeah. J.J. McCarthy's good. I don't – right now in these big games, I would play Cade McNamara, but that's just my opinion because of the experience. Yeah. But, you know, that's just me. But I think Michigan's going to get exposed against great defenses like Ohio State and Penn State. Well, that running back, was it Blake Corum? Yeah. Yeah, he, he, he's pretty good. They need him to carry him and, you know, play his best in the big games. Yeah, and, that, and, he, and he will. If they open up the holes, I mean, he'll be fine. But, you know, it's the offensive line again we come down to. Uh, yeah. You know, you, you he, as good as a running back is, he's not going to go anywhere if there's no hole. Yeah. I mean, Michigan should. Aren't, isn't Michigan built to win in the trenches and to get yeah. the best, you know, O-linemen? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So, we'll see. It's getting good. I love this time of year. Yeah. Uh, Clemson at 6, 5-0. and oh, Wins at Georgia Tech, at Wake Forest versus NC State. Uh, how are you liking Clemson so far, Dustin? You know, Clemson, they're – they're beatable. They're probably the most beatable team, in my opinion, in the top five or six. Mm -hmm. um, just for the simple fact that DJ still hasn't really played up to his potential. I think he's starting to, though. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, if DJ does, Clemson's dangerous because they have, in my opinion, the best defense in college football right now. Yeah. They got, like, pretty much everything else if they can figure out the quarterback position, right? Yeah. Yeah, you let Wake Forest hang, what, 50 points on you? But that's just because Wake Forest has one hell of an offense. Yeah. You know, so. What you, I, yeah, what do you think, Dean? Is, is Clemson back? Are they are they a contender, you think? Uh, only because they've won. I mean, uh, two games could have been going the other way pretty easy. Yeah. You know, um, yeah. but but they but they won. You know, that's what the numbers like. My my the numbers like winners. <laughs> it, it doesn't really care how you win. If you win, um you're a winner. Yep. Um, no matter what the competition is. Um, but I tend to agree that I think you're right, they're the most beatable team there in the top five, top six or whatever. Yeah, and uh you know, they've got some prove-it games coming up, and the big yep. one is at, at Notre Dame is going to be a lot of fun. Yes. Yeah. Um. Man, that that's crazy. So can I ask your uncle real quick his opinion on how he thinks Notre Dame is going to bounce back? Yeah, what do you think, Dean? Uh, oh, yeah, I, I think they will. Um, the, the sad thing of it is they're out of the, uh, the picture. Now, mm -hmm. uh, especially that uh, debacle uh, with Marshall. Uh, yep. Marshall just isn't that good of a team. I mean, that's the numbers have dropped Notre Dame, I mean, off the charts because of those two losses. 
And uh, I, I don't, um, first of all, they won't be considered for any kind of playoff because there's two losses. But they uh, have everything to play for. They can be the spoiler. Mm-hmm. And, and I think they will be. Yeah, I'm looking, looking forward to seeing them bounce back. Go yeah, ahead. I think they will, yeah. How about, uh, I, I've been saying it this whole time now, you know, Alex and everybody still thinks I'm crazy, but how about, man, I I thought Marcus Freeman should have played Drew Pine sooner. Drew, Drew Pine is a winner, you yeah. know. He, he wins. It may not be pretty, but Drew Pine will win you football games. I agree with you there. I, I saw that uh, prior to when he was actually forced to play. Yeah, see? You know? and, I mean, I was being, you know, called all different kinds of things, but that's another story. But, like, <laughs> I just figured, like, you know, Buckner – struggled in the first half of that Marshall game, you should have brought in a fresh body. And if you bring in Pine sooner, Notre Dame might eke, eke out a small victory over Marshall. Yeah, I think they'd have had a better shot. My, yeah. my so. contention is with Dusty, I say that Buckner or Pine, I think the record would be the same. No, I disagree. I, well, what about North Carolina? Maybe they lose that North – I don't know. But I don't think there's a big difference between Pine and Buckner. Do you, Dean? Uh, I think they're uh, fairly uh, close. Um, but I, I think Pine basically is um, – More ready? Yeah, I think he's really got his head on straight. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and they can rely on they can rely on him. Is is Pine older than Buckner? Yes. Yeah. That, that's kind of the vibe I get. Like Pine is the veteran who who is more ready to handle it, and Buckner's more of like a project. I feel so, like that too. Yeah. Do you? So a lot of people are saying that Buckner's upside, they said, is a Heisman Trophy quarterback. You know what I'm saying? Like. Like, if he can get an arm and learn how to make his throws, Buckner's going to yeah. be a damn kid. Yeah. But, you know, at the end of the day, right now, the success to winning is Drew Pine because he has that swagger, he has the experience, and he just has overall smartness when it comes to playing quarterback. I, I feel like we're talking about the 49ers, Trey Lance and Jimmy Garoppolo right now. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh – do you think Notre Dame can beat BYU tomorrow night? Oh, that's a big game. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They, you said can. Yes, they can. That atmosphere should be a lot of fun, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's in Vegas. And, by the way, I'm calling it now. Audric Estime runs for over 120 yards. All right. There you go. <laughs> I like that kid, man. I do. Um. Go to let's go to number seven Tennessee, uh, you know four and zero wins at Pitt over Florida. Uh, <laughs> up next, a big game at LSU. Big yeah. game on tomorrow. I can't wait for that one. That's a you know again it's prove it games. Tennessee can't get caught looking past LSU with Bama right around the corner. They need to take care of business and get that win. Dean, how do you see Tennessee at LSU tomorrow going? Yeah, I, I think Tennessee's got them out manned, honestly. Mm -hmm. um, I'll be surprised if they fall to LSU. Um, yeah. You know, where are they playing that ball game? Um, against LSU? That's at home. No, that's at LSU. At LSU, yes. Oh, definitely. So that's a yeah. factor in it. So, um, but still, I, I, I think Tennessee's the better, the more talented team, so. Are they – they're more – they're, like, probably second tier in the SEC. How do you think they match up against Bama or Georgia? Boy, I don't know. It, it's not really fair to match them up <laughs> <laughs> with, yeah. with those two guys, you know. Um, but they're right at that next level, and uh, they could surprise you at any time. But on a regular basis, you can't go against the other two. Yeah. Uh, it, 
it's good for college football when Tennessee is good and still undefeated at this point in the year, right? I, I feel like yeah. as a kid growing up, if you know, Tennessee being good it just makes sense. Yeah. Yes, it does. What do you so, think, Dustin? Uh, is Tennessee for real or are they just on a good start? Okay, so when you asked your uncle that question about Bama and Georgia, I think they are the o- really one of the only teams on Bama and Georgia's schedule that could give them problems. That could, yeah. yeah. You know, but um, at the end of the day, man, I like Tennessee. You know, Hendon Hooker is a pretty damn good quarterback, and he's having a good year. You yeah. know, how do you beat a team like Alabama or Georgia? Guess what? You have a quarterback who can run the ball. Nick Saban yeah. has struggled with quarterbacks who are mobile really bad. Yeah. I mean, Johnny Manziel beat him. You know, uh, back in the day, Ole Miss with Chad Kelly and – Bo Wallace and guys like that who can move. Deshaun Watson, Trevor Lawrence. Yes. Yep. Yeah. The guys who can move have beat Nick Saban. So keep an eye out. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. I'm really looking forward to that game tomorrow at LSU and <clears throat> see if Tennessee can take care of business. And that sets up such a big game next week against Bama. And all we want is both, you know, undefeated going into that. Oh, yeah. Yep, that'd be nice, wouldn't it? <laughs> Ooh. So, me and Dustin have a friend, uh, Tommy, in our group, who's a big Georgia fan, and he doesn't he hasn't liked that Georgia's been a little bit lower in your numbers rankings of late. Why do you think that is? Why are they lower? Yeah. Uh, so he, well, he thinks, um, he thinks they should be one, two at worst, you know. But when you're playing Samford and Kent. And struggling against Kent, you know. And, and barely got by Missouri, very fortunate. Yeah. Um, the numbers, you know, recognize that they're not playing. The, they played one uh, good team, Oregon. Yeah. That's it. Is, is and, at Missouri and Yeah, they won that Oregon. one big, but still. Yeah. Um, after that, you know, they've just, you know, just put on their uniforms and going through the motions with these other teams, you know. Um, and, and the numbers recognize uh, the competition. I mean, that's the whole thing with this. Yes, they're good. Mm-hmm. And they could be the best in the nation. I don't know. Yeah. But they haven't proven themselves yet. Yeah. It's so, a process. And when yeah. we get down to the end of the year, if they're still there, then they will be ranked accordingly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, uh, the, the, they, they got a game coming up with against Auburn, and Auburn is probably going to get manhandled real well. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so, I mean, Auburn is really, you know, you can't consider them uh, a quality uh, team. Yeah. They're, they're, they're not really uh, – Georgia shouldn't have any problem at all. So there's another kind of a cupcake for them in reality. Yeah. Should be. So that's their problem. They they have a their, their schedule isn't helping them as far as the numbers go. Yeah. How are you feeling about Auburn this year? And how's like the local uh, fans and radio dealing with Auburn this year? Well, it's kind of mixed. Uh, you know, it's, a, it's kind of strange because the fans really like the coach. Okay. And they like yeah, the players. They like the whole organization as far as um, what they put on the field. The fans are not really – they're pretty smart when it comes to football. Uh-huh. And they, they know that we're playing here in Auburn. We're playing with a lot of Tier 2 guys. We've yeah. lost – basically all the real good guys they've gone to the transfer portal and and uh, everything else i mean we lost bo nix uh, people didn't you know the um the, the press came down on you know yeah and, and he just decided you know the heck with you i'll just go and yeah. uh but look what bo nix is doing yeah i mean oregon's <laughs> you know so anyway <laughs> i mean um, Auburn is, is uh, they'll, they'll compete every game, but they're not going to win very many games because they don't have the quality of players that most of the rest of the top tier 
SEC hats. Yeah. So no, I, I and feel it, that. it's not the coach's fault. I mean, it's to me, it's the people that are making the decisions outside of football that are causing the problem by not uh, supporting this coach. Okay. Uh, if they would get behind him and say, you know, we're sticking with you and, you know, we're really going to uh, do what we can to get uh, recruiting up and everything, uh, it would make a big difference. Yeah. Uh, the the other players, the players would come in because of that. And because a lot of, a lot of players are not recognizing Auburn because they don't, they're uncertain about the coach, whether he's going to be there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's a tough, tough so, environment to win in and recruit in, right? Yeah, yeah, it's a mess when you when you don't have the kind of support that you need. Yeah, you know, um, you know he's in a tough spot, but you know <laughs> he's got a big contract too, so they <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're kind of they're caught between a rock and a hard place when it comes to getting rid of somebody. <laughs> That's what they were talking about, Jimbo Fisher and Texas A&M, too. They're like, well, yeah. they owe $90 yeah. million, dollars, though. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, you know, uh, Dustin, yeah, go ahead. Um, You know, Brian Harson, I think he's a decent coach. Uh, You know, like like you said, it's tough waters down there, you know, trying to recruit because he's, he's currently having to go against LSU in recruiting. Texas A&M in recruiting, Georgia, yeah. Yeah. Alabama, you know, the cream of the crop. And at the end of the day, guys are going to choose, you know, Georgia, Bama, and even LSU at the end of the day, you know, just because those are big-time SEC schools. But, uh, you know, a, a big disappointment to me has been Tank Bigsby. You know. Who's that? What would you say? Who, who's that? The Auburn running back, yeah. he has so much potential, but he just hasn't played up to it this year. Yeah. There there are moments when he looks like he's Superman, and other times when, he, when he's, you know, we can't find him. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he seems to be very inconsistent, but he's a, he's a great talent. Um, but, again, you got to have guys to open holes for your running backs. Yeah. And I don't I don't blame the running back that much when you got – uh, difficulty, uh, you know, giving him space to run. Yeah. Can I say this real quick, Alex? Yeah. Don't give me – I mean, like, hear me out, dude. I absolutely hate the transfer portal. Yeah. I am not a big fan of the transfer portal. I think it's uh, it's bringing college football to the ground, in my opinion. I, I just had to get that off my chest. I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean it- – it's true, but there's not a lot we can do about it. It's the changing of the era. It's the changing of the times. It's the uh, athlete empowerment era. You know what I mean? Yeah, I Freedom. understand. I just want to get my decision. But, I, yeah, it definitely complicates things. And you hear Saban and these guys, they you know, they can't really stand it. So. Um, well, the, the thing that the portal has done to all the teams and all the coaches and all the organizations is they no longer uh, are are certain of what their rosters are going to be from year yeah. to year. And they have to now re-recruit the guys they got, make sure they stay, which you never had to do before. Once you got them in your program, they were there. But That's got to be. But now you got you got to fight just to keep what you got. <laughs> just recruiting every day now. Yeah. <laughs> that's the that's 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 thing that I don't like about the transfer portal is that it's changed um, loyalties or uh, it, it's given opportunities, which, you know, it's got nice for some people, but it's it's opened up uh, Pandora's box. And and now if you don't like a, where you're at, you just, oh, I'm just leaving. You know, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean it's it's not that's so different than what it used to be. You you stayed uh, with the teams you signed with, and uh, you know, but that's again that's past days. Well, yeah. See, I only brought it up because a a a good player from Notre Dame just in just entered the transfer portal, and he's going to be sitting out the rest of the season. 
and Jacob Lacey. Yeah. And and that kind of really upset me. I'm like, man, this kid's talented. And, and we've seen it against North Carolina and especially against Cal with three sacks, you know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> another thing we got to battle so it's uh the game you know the, the league's always changing the game's always changing so we'll see you know who adapts the best to these new you know well i do think that what that does guys that does free up the talent with these major uh organizations mm-hmm. that frees up alabama players georgia players ohio state players if, you know if they're not playing getting playing time and they think they should Adios. Yeah. You can go elsewhere, you know, where like, you couldn't before. It's like the Wild West out here now. Yeah. <laughs> so that, of, might, that might uh, actually be a good thing. It may begin to balance out the rosters. Um, yeah, I, I could see it a little bit, yeah. Yeah. Um, How about Ole Miss, guys? Uh, 5-0 and Ole Miss. Number nine in the numbers and number nine, uh, you know, in the AP and all that. Um, win, you know, win at Georgia Tech. Uh, they beat Kentucky. How are, what do you think when you see Ole Miss, Dean? Uh, do you think they're uh, for real? Yeah, I think they're for real. I mean, I, uh, I know that they, they look upon the win against uh, Tennessee as being a um, – you know, a, a fluke, you know? Yeah. Right? Um, wasn't that the team they played? Who did they play? Uh, they played Kentucky. You know, Kentucky, they're talking yeah. about, you know, the, the fluke play at the last where Kentucky was going down, they could tie the game or win the game or whatever, you know. But um, they knocked the ball out of his hands. I mean, you got to give credit to the defense yeah, <laughs> for, winning, absolutely. for winning that ball game. <laughs> you know, and not just say, oh, yeah, well, they're lucky. Um, you make your own luck. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I I don't think they're one of the elites, but they're right in there, not too far uh, from Tennessee. I mean, they're, they they can win ball games. Yeah, and they got uh, at LSU, they got home versus Bama coming up. How do you feel about Ole Miss, Dustin? You know what? Um, again, Ole Miss is a team who could give Bama problems. Mm-hmm. I mean, Jackson Dart is a transfer from USC, and that kid yeah. is a baller. And mm-hmm. you know, uh, I don't know much about Ole Miss. I I watched a couple of their games. They're good. You know, they can give teams problems. But again, I don't know exactly that much about them. Yeah. You know, at LSU coming up, that's going to be, you know, three weeks away. That's a big game. If they can stay undefeated to that point, they got at Vanderbilt tomorrow and versus Auburn in two weeks. Yes. Yeah, so, you know, um, but again, their major challenge other than Tennessee is still ahead of them. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, For – so – I thought it was crazy there at first. We had undefeated Duke, undefeated Kentucky, undefeated Kansas, undefeated Syracuse. I, I thought for a second it was college basketball. <laughs> how about them, uh, how about them Jayhawks, yeah. my favorite Cinderella team? <laughs> yes. Number 10 on here, 5-0. and oh. Yeah. Jayhawk. Jayhawk. <laughs> I never thought I'd live to see the day. <laughs> I don't think they've won five ball games in 20 years, have they? <laughs> yeah, uh, they won back when Todd Reesing was there with uh, um, God, Mark Mangino. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But that was like 05, 06, 07. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm, it's refreshing to see a program finally climb out of the gutter, you know, yeah. and actually perform pretty well. Some but, quality you know, wins. Again, you know, they their competition's going to grow, too. Mm-hmm. So, you know, mainly um, the numbers are rewarding them for their performance so far in the field they've won. Yep. So, look, at it, look at their schedule, their next four games. Yeah. Versus, versus TCU, 
at Oklahoma, at Baylor versus Oklahoma State. Ooh. There you go. They got a little buy in there, but still, I mean, that's a tough, tough four games coming up. Yeah. You know what, The the true colors will show. Yeah. Oklahoma is a very winnable game for Kansas. I think for the first time in, like, shoot, six, seven years, maybe even a decade, that Kansas has a chance to beat Oklahoma. At Oklahoma, though, that's going to be tough. Oklahoma just got the doors beat off of them by TCU, bro. Yeah. (laughs) I got to agree that I think Kansas, if they're going to beat Oklahoma, this is a year (laughs) to do it. You know, um, because Oklahoma's not going to be down there uh, very long. (laughs) (laughs) Why is Oklahoma down there? I like Brent Venables. Uh, They're just, to me, guys, um, Chemistry to me is so critical to college football. Yeah. And sometimes you just don't have the right guys. Even if they are talented, it just doesn't seem to click, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And um, I think every team goes through that every once in a while. That um, You know, you should be better than, you know, what the results have been. But you're just, some for some reason, you're not playing that level. You see that all the time, especially in the pros. It's like the talent is all, everywhere on the roster. It's a contender if they play up to their potential. Yeah. And for whatever reason, just the chemistry's off. The, you know, the timing's off something, you know? Well, I mean, it doesn't help that Lincoln Riley took six big-time football players to USC. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And that's, yep. that's yeah. At that portal point. again, I'm telling you, you know. Yep. There's a wrench and everything. It's a killer. Um, UCLA, number 11, 5 and 0. Uh, wins over uh, at Colorado versus the Huskies. <laughs> and here comes their true test versus Utah tomorrow. Yeah. Big game. And Dustin, this is what I was warning you about. You were just praising Utah, how they had bounced back after that loss to Florida. I got them losing tomorrow against UCLA. Oh, where's that? <laughs> is it at the Rose Bowl? It is at UCLA at the Rose Bowl. See, that's the problem is I'm not worried about it because the Rose Bowl has only been having like 40% attendance this year. It's been <laughs> bad if you actually look it up. They were making tickets very, very cheap for UCLA games because the attendance, even being undefeated, has been terrible. So... I like that quarterback, though, Dorian Thompson-Robinson. He looks pretty good. Yeah, he's good, but, man, Utah's defense, to me, is the best defense in the Pac-12. Well, usually usually I like – I always root for Utah, but UCLA, I think they're for real this year. I I think they're a contender in that conference, and uh, statistically, UCLA also has a great defense. They have the statistically the best run defense in the Pac-12. Yeah, it, it's it's going to be a test for them. I mean, you're gonna you're gonna really find out it now whether UCLA is uh, a top ten contender or not. Yeah, that's got to be Pac-12 after dark on ESPN, right? No, it's like a three thirty kickoff. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. You would think you would want that in prime time at 1030 on ESPN. Yeah, you would think so. Yeah. But we'll see. Uh, that, that's going to be a great game, though. One of the best games of the day tomorrow. Yeah. Um, Syracuse 5-0 and wins over Louisville, Purdue, Virginia. Syracuse, man, I, I haven't seen them undefeated this far into the season in a long time. No, they they seem to be overachieving right now. Yeah. Um, again, you know, they still have their tests coming. That's the thing about earlier in the season, the first half of the season, um, the schedules are not necessarily, other than a spot here and there, uh, they're, you know, they're so-so games. Yeah. You know, you, you, know you, should, you should be able to win, you know, a fair share of them. And then when you get later into the conference play, 
you get knocked around a little bit. And, yeah, I, uh, you know, well, I mean, again, you know, the numbers say, you know, well, they're undefeated. They've, they've beaten some, you know, uh, Louisville is not bad. Purdue is pretty good. Yeah. You know, Virginia was not. I mean, <laughs> you, if, I don't know what happened to Virginia, you know, I mean, but, yeah. you know, it's, it's still. Oh, um, I, I love seeing Syracuse up there, though. And if they can take care of business, they got to buy this week. If they can beat NC State at home, that should set up an undefeated matchup, Syracuse at Clemson. Yeah, I don't see that happening. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, you know, my opinion, um, NC State looks pretty tough to me. Okay, you got NC State winning that? The, yeah, I they they just look like they've got it together. And Syracuse has won their ball games, but they've not played uh, the kind of talent yeah. um, to, to prove to me that they're, um, you know, again, the numbers loves winners. Yeah. Syracuse so far is a winner. Um, North Carolina State has lost a game. So yeah. they're down the list because they're in my in the numbers just are saying that winners belong on top. Well, I agree though. I mean, you are what your record says you are. I mean, Dustin, we just watched a game uh, last night where it was sloppy, it was ugly. Neither team deserved to win, but you're happy as hell because your Colts got the win. At, you know, win at any cost, right? Yeah, absolutely. And uh. Not to mention Syracuse still has to play Notre Dame, and that's going to be a tough one because I think the Irish are going to be riding a, a big win streak going into that game, you know? And that's so, going to be in, in Syracuse, so that should be a great game. Yeah, it, and uh, – It could be, yeah. Can yeah. I say uh, hats off to Dino Babers, though, man. You know, he was on the hot seat just a year ago, yeah. and you have a Syracuse team that's undefeated right now. Hats off to him, man. He, he's doing a damn good job over there. Yeah, yeah, for Absolutely. sure. How about unranked, but number 13 on the number system, James Madison at 4-0? Now, doesn't that blow you away? <laughs> I love it. I mean, uh, again, um, uh, they've performed on the field. They're undefeated. Um, they're a division. They were a division two last year. Wow. And FCS. they played for championships year after year after year. So these guys are not, you know, you think of James Madison, you know, who the heck are they? <laughs> they played for championships uh, almost every year. Yeah. So a big game um, experience, it's right? A, it's a, it's a eye opener for division one um, teams. Yeah. They're going to surprise a lot of people. And you go into App State and come away with a win. That's pretty impressive nowadays. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What do you so, think, Dustin? Yeah. Um, you know, man, college football, dude, is changing. And, you know, the way that the landscape is, you have teams from the FCS who are coming over. Yeah. You know, playing like not too long ago, Old Dominion was FCS. Now they're, you know. Yeah. And, uh, in a group of five school, and they, they're they beating teams in the ACC. I mean, That's the thing. If it wasn't working, we we would be like, what what's going on? But they're winning. They're winning big games over good quality opponents. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, it'd just be like if, if the North Dakota State Bison was to get brought up and be in the FBS, yeah. they would throw too. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, there's just a lot of good things going on right now when it comes to the realignments in certain ways, and James Madison is not no pushover. No. Yeah. It's, it's like as much as we're getting frustrated with the conference realignment and all the changes, it's still pretty good, too. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, that's, I agree. Uh, yeah, we're just going to have to get used to the changes and, uh, um, and, and deal with it in our, in our own minds. And yeah. – you know, just enjoy the competition. Absolutely. Um, the way it is, you know. Um, speaking of Oklahoma real quick, Dean, they're moving to the SEC, 
and getting blown out the way they did by who was that TCU? Yeah. Yep. Is I mean, uh, can Oklahoma? Is this? I think it's a bad move. The only thing, especially for Oklahoma, the only thing I think that's saving Texas a little bit in my mind is Arch Manning. What do you think, Dean? Uh, I think it's a huge mistake for both those teams to pull out of the Big 12. Yeah. I, I just, I can't even in my mind imagine why you'd even consider it. Yeah. You could be yeah. dominant in that conference over there. You come to the SEC and you're going to fight. You're going to be, yeah. you're, you, you'll be lucky uh, <laughs> uh, to even be considered <laughs> beating half the teams. Yeah. So, gonna I don't know. It just seems to me like if you're giving up a, a gold mine for the coal, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So, I want to be the, you know, they're the kings of the Big 12. Stay in the Big 12, continue to be kings. I mean, what's wrong with that? Yeah. Yeah. It's completely surprising to me. But, yeah. Although they're not very good, well, although they're not doing very good this year. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the, the, the Red River shootout or whatever it is now, <laughs> it's going to be one heck of a, a football game. Uh, and it means a lot to both teams, but yeah. it means nothing <laughs> to the <laughs> world of, uh, of football other than that. <laughs> um, I mean, no, no one else really cares other than <laughs> those two teams what happens. What do you think, Dustin? Oh, man. Um, I personally do not like the move because I, I was just about to ask you a quick trivia question, Alex. So what what is the one, usually one of the top three states that gets a lot of the best athletes? It's, top three. It's, it's, the state of, or it's the state of Texas, correct? Yeah, yeah. They're, so, they're probably number one. And they're struggling right now. <laughs> getting players out of the state of Texas. I mean, if you look at schools up north, Notre Dame, Ohio State, you know, Michigan, even, you know, teams that are out west are outbidding Texas oh, without yeah. even being in the SEC. I mean, when you go to the SEC, it's a whole different ball game. You're you're recruiting against the absolute best. Yeah. And if you can't recruit right now against teams – you know, against players out of your own state, against teams like Notre Dame, Ohio State, teams in the Midwest, you're not going to have – it's going to be bad trying to recruit against SEC schools. Yeah, if if Texas didn't have Arch Manning already coming in, I would be a, r very worried. Like, Texas could be bottom of that conference. I think Arch Manning will save them, but Oklahoma might be bottom of that conference. Like, it's going to be tough. You know, and I think this is worse for o Oklahoma – in my opinion, just just because I think Steve Sarkeesian is a better coach than what Brent Venables is going to be, because Steve uh, Steve Sarkeesian has been under the wing of Nick Saban, so yeah. he's going to know what to do at least. Yeah. Will Texas have patience with them? That's the question, you know? They would have to because I honestly don't think unless your you're plan is to go out and get an Urban Meyer, then – you're not going to really have no other uh, better, you know, name to, to be able to go out there and get. So, Speaking of Urban Meyer, I have to run this by Dean. Uh, were you surprised to see Scott Frost get fired by Nebraska? Well, you know, uh, as poor as the team has played, yeah, uh, it's always, you know, the coach is always the one that gets the kick. He was know? supposed to be the guy to bring them back, you know? Um, and they're they're kind of in the same mode as Auburn. You know, they just um, they keep shooting themselves in the foot. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you know, um, I don't know. Uh, they have had a, uh, such a long downtime that they've not been able to pull in real talent. Yeah, you know, I mean, you, you can't win with mediocre guys. You know, and um. You, you've got to let a guy build a program. Um, yeah. You can't just expect him to turn around in a year or two. And uh, it just doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, that really saddens me that 
that uh, Nebraska is <laughs> so bad. Yeah. This is so sad. Well, um, they're trying to hire the guy that they believe can turn him around. They're thinking about bringing in Urban Meyer. <laughs> that, that, that doesn't even sound like any kind of a fit at all to me. <laughs> the, uh, Alex, about that is, you know, yeah, Urban Meyer can win you games and win now, but, like, if you want to talk about a long-term program builder, in my opinion, you know, with, with the history that Coach Myers has, yeah, you know, yeah. you're going to want a guy who is going to be committed, like, man, go get somebody who built – you know, a Matt Campbell from Iowa State who built Iowa State from a two-win football team in years past to winning eight, nine games a season. Or somebody like a Lance Leipold who, you know, is from Kansas who won 100, who went 109 and six at, in Whitewater, Wisconsin, you know, and then coached at Buffalo, turned them around and look at what he's doing in Lawrence, you know. Go get yeah. somebody who knows how to build a program. Yeah. I, I don't know that the ego would be stroked enough for Myers to go to a team like this. Yeah, I know. I really don't, you know. Uh, <laughs> you know, yeah. he's not done that before. He's going where there's talent. Maybe yeah. you could pray to the high heaven and, and Tom Osborne's ghost will walk back through that door, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think isn't I think Tom Osborne's still alive. Or yeah. yeah. Maybe. <laughs> That's what yeah, him and Switcher had a meeting uh, not too long ago. Yeah. Yeah. That Oklahoma, uh, they got at Kansas up uh, tomorrow, right? Yeah. Oh, you see yeah. at Kansas. That's going to be a really good game. Yeah. College uh, game day is going to be there tomorrow. Yeah, I believe so. Yeah. I think you're right. Nice. Yep. Game day is going to Lawrence. That's yeah. going to be fun. Man, go Kansas. Man, I'm telling you. But, uh, yeah, man, it's going to be a good game. And I, I'm excited. Who ever uh, thought that that would be a big game? Yeah. TCU, Kansas. Whoopee. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine, yeah. like, Telling College Game Day that they're going to go to Kansas this year, they would have laughed at you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but it might turn out to be a pretty good ball game. Yeah, that'll be fun. Um, they play. I mean, at Kansas versus Oklahoma State versus Kansas State, uh, number two uh, offense in the country behind Ohio State. TCU is is on fire. Yeah. Yeah, Max Duggan's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, undefeated 4-0. Oklahoma State is ranked 15 on the How number. About that? Yeah, yeah. That, surprised, that surprises a few people, I'm sure. Like too, too low? Yeah. Yeah. What, um, you know, is Oklahoma State uh, a contender in that conference, you think? Or just a good start? Oh, I think they're a contender, yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, C C.J. Sanders is a really good quarterback, and to me, this is the year where if you're Oklahoma State, you want to win the Big Twelve because you have a shot at a college football playoff if you go undefeated. Yeah. You know, that's just my opinion because I mean, if you're an undefeated Big Twelve team and you win the Big Twelve championship, they're not going to keep you out of it. Out of the playoff. Yeah. Well, okay. I, think know, at one, nice I think at one time, I the numbers actually had Oklahoma State pretty high um, after they knocked off Baylor, you know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Baylor yeah. has yeah. faded. So that win against Baylor is not as uh, valuable um, as it once was. So that, that kind of um, has a lot to do with Again, the the value of a win loss as it changes yeah. over the week, you know, just because yeah, then, you beat, just because you beat a, a great team one week 
and then they be they get beat bad by someone else. I mean, they they drop, and so mm -hmm. that value of that team drops. Yeah, with it, and that yeah, and the, that's Oklahoma State's problem. And the, the numbers isn't going to give you much for beating Arkansas Pine Bluff. Right. <laughs> that's so, right. Uh, what's up? Can you tell me where the fighting Brett Bielema's are? With the what? <laughs> the fighting Brett Bielema's the uh where the uh Illinois fighting Illini are. Illinois. Uh, look. Illinois is thirty one. Man, they're a pretty good team. They're gonna, I think, play spoiler in the Big Ten. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they're mixed in there again, uh, Dustin, with a whole lot of one loss teams. Yeah. So, I mean, they're they may be better than than that, uh, but you. Know, when you got a whole mixture, it's like the all the undefeated teams are grouped together, and then the, all the teams with a one loss are kind of grouped together, and 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 that's kind of the way it's evaluated. Um, if that if that loss is a uh, quality loss, it will actually pull you up, um, as it did Wake Forest. Yeah, you know Wake Forest is is a sixteen with a loss. Yeah, it's an interesting part of the season because right now we it's easy to just skip over the one loss teams, right? Yeah, but yeah. We revisit it week eight, week nine, and those one loss teams will, might be right back up at the top. They're gonna they're gonna be pulled up. You watch. Yeah. You know, we keep losing the undefeated teams. You know, we're down to sixteen now. Yeah. You know, so every week we lose a few, and those one loss teams just kind of move on up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so like uh, has. What's what up? It, has the numbers ever been like correct? So obviously, whoever wins the national championship, are they always number one on your numbers? It ends up. Uh, I can't think of any time right off my the top of my head that it hasn't uh, been the same champion. Um, you think about it. I mean, your last game is the biggest quality game you could play. And mm -hmm. even if you lost that game, the 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 loss value is big, you know. Yeah. But if you if you go undefeated and, and your last game is against another undefeated team, it's pretty hard for the numbers to say, well, you you don't belong there. Yeah. Um, but if there's two or three undefeated teams at the top, um, it may not match um, what you think it should match. And that's why we like it, you know. Other teams, other teams can be undefeated at the very end of the season yeah. and not be a champion. Yeah. So, uh, but you, usually it's, I mean, it's pretty damn close. Uh, pretty much every year, uh, I'll have a team here and there that um, will slide in or or uh, contest. Um, so I've I've had the top four most of the time but not always yeah i think i remember last year like michigan finishing i believe number two in the country yeah and so that was pretty cool it gives you different perspective to, to see like how it values and certain teams will be a little higher than you think or a little lower but it's a lot of fun and uh, you know you don't want it to be exactly the same as as the other rankings, you want to see a little difference, and and it tells you why along the way. You know, yes. with the quality of win and loss for every game. So, yeah, if you started with this at the very beginning, um, mm -hmm. you would see some uh, radical changes up and down all the way through the the season. But when it gets to this point, um, where you are narrowing down the better teams that have yep. proven themselves, um, then it becomes more like, well, now everybody is thinking in that same realm. They're thinking about the same teams now. Yeah. And right now we think we know who the top five are just in thought because we've uh -huh. been told, we've been told that, but do we yeah. know for a fact that these are the top five teams? Mm -hmm. No, no, nope. yeah. We don't. And I love it. 
I, you know, the national media is full of narratives, and this is a narrative buster right here. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Dustin falls for those narratives all the time. I got to correct him on the NFL pod. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, let's look at Wake Forest as the highest ranked one loss team at 16. Yes. How, how do you feel about Wake Forest early in the season? You know, the quality loss to Clemson um, at Vandy, a win at Florida State. Yeah. Dustin, yeah, they, do you like they've had, they've had a little bit tougher schedule than many. Yeah. And it, and it shows. Yeah. You know, uh, I do like Wake Forest, and uh, I believe Sam Hartman's back, right? I think he played in that Clemson game, if I'm not yeah, mistaken. I mean, didn't they almost beat Clemson? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It went to overtime. Yeah. Yeah. And believe it or not, they had like a 14-point lead, I believe, over Clemson yeah. and just collapsed. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, Wake Forest, Wake Forest is a pretty good team. They got to get better on defense. But I do like Dave Clawson, too. So, I think they're pretty good. Yeah. And then my favorite, uh, 17th, the last undefeated team on here, Coastal Carolina. <laughs> wow, the chances! I, I actually like them. I root for them when I see them. I mean, I like to see a name like that up on the board. Yeah, again, you know, you look behind them, and it's teams that have lost uh, games that you know uh, probably shouldn't have, but did. Yeah, you know? and they weren't. They were. They were not quality losses. So you end up with a team that is undefeated and has a lot of mediocre wins. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're the they're the bottom of the the undefeated teams, but and again, makes, but again, that makes they, sense, right? Pardon? Yeah, and that makes sense. It's like it it values you know the wins they have, but it also realizes that those aren't the most quality wins. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, you know, and plus, Coastal Carolina has a pretty decent, you know, NFL type quarterback in Grace McCall. Yes, they they're not a fluke. Yeah. No. Uh, where is Notre Dame currently ranked, Alex? Because I seen a stat today that I think would be interesting if they ended the season the rest of the way un, um undefeated. Because as of now, they have the hardest schedule re- remaining in college football. Okay. Yes. They they will be able to climb a long ways up the list if they if they put their uh, best foot forward the rest of the season. Right now, they are ranked 78, uh, right behind Western Kentucky, one ahead of Miami, Florida. Okay, because they they still have Syracuse, who's ranked. They got yep. USC, who's highly ranked. Yep. They got Clemson, who's highly ranked. Yep. BYU, the big game. Yep. Yes, so they have a lot of quality opportunities. Uh, that the numbers will re- will uh, you know pay attention to, uh, mm-hmm. but right now the thing that's killing Notre Dame obviously is the the Marshall debacle. Yeah, I mean, it, I mean it's just killing. Marshall's clear down here to number one fifteen. Yeah, or where is it? No, no, where are they? Marshall. I don't know. Let me look here. But I mean, so Marshall's ninety seven. Yeah. I mean, it's like, yeah, Marshall's <laughs> 97 out of 131. You yeah. lost to those guys. <laughs> Can we forget that we played them, though? <laughs> Dustin doesn't like talking about that game. Well, I know, but that's, you know, I'm just trying to um, no. show you the, the reason numbers are not happy with Notre Dame. We're no, not- I mean, it's, it's, it's accurate. I mean, that's a bad loss. We all agree, and, you yeah. know, it, it's was gonna bring clearly, you down. Was that What's clearly? That? A, was that clearly a fluke? Does it happen twice in a row? Uh, yes, I think so. You think Marshall beats Notre Dame again? Oh no, I'm not sure what your question was. Okay, yeah, sorry. he was saying yes, it was a fluke. Okay, yeah. It should have I'll never go. happened. It should have never happened, but it did. You know, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> That's college football, man. That is college football at its finest. It is. Yeah. You know, and the sad thing of it is, you know, what happens is after a team beats your team, 
you tend to pull for that team so that those value points will stay higher. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. but they're not cooperating, you know, at all. So <laughs> do you still do you still believe in Marcus Freeman? Yes, I do. Absolutely do. I think he's the guy uh right now um that will cement that team together now. Um after what they've all gone through. Um uh, I do. I think the players love him. Fans are crazy about him, you know. I think that as long as he can keep some good coordinators uh, in his pocket, oh, um, he'll be he'll be good for Notre Dame for as long as he wants. Yeah, I think you know it's easy you know to overreact, but it's early season, year one of being a head coach. Like, let's have some patience with him, see how he does the rest of the year. Yeah, there's plenty of opportunity to get some quality wins, you know. Two top five recruiting classes so far. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, this year might be a little bit of a down year, but the, the future is bright. You know, he looks like he can recruit. So, Well, if I end the, end the season with, uh, you know, a, a two loss, mm -hmm. um, that's going to be quite remarkable. Yeah. And Just to, to uh, start 0-2 uh, and, and win out. Yeah. So I mean that will draw the eyes of uh, the the recruits out there. Yeah. Oh, uh, right now a huge win for Nebraska going into uh, Piscataway, and they just knocked off the Rutgers. Nice. So did they? Yes. Good win. After they fire their coach, they win a game, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I don't know. <laughs> I I wouldn't say that that's a big quality win either. I mean, you know, they were three and two, so. Yeah. And, Dustin, this goes along with a little narrative that you've had. I remember you hating on Michigan for playing Colorado State, saying, you know, early in the season, saying they weren't any good. Uh, I don't know if it was this year, maybe last year, whatever, but Colorado State, 0-4, ranked 131st, dead last in the numbers. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny you say that because I currently got the Colorado State game on TV. <laughs> hey, hopefully they get a win, get get out of the bottom. One rank one thirty one. That's not where you want to be. Yeah. No, <laughs> but um, how are you guys feeling about how the season's going so far? I mean, you know, your gut feeling going into the season, who the best teams were, who's gonna be the you know competing for a national championship. How's it going? Do you think it's going according to plan, how it should go through through week five? Uh, to be honest, you know what, man? In my opinion, there is no clear-cut national champion right now. Yeah. Uh, you know, there are eight teams that could win it. And, you know, people not be surprised. I mean, Ohio State, Michigan, Alabama, Georgia, Clemson, you know, yep. You got all those teams that are capable of winning a national championship. O Oklahoma State, in my opinion, they're a dark horse. Keep an eye on them, boys. Yeah. Yep. I mean, the opportunity is there for Tennessee. You know, you beat Bama, then you set up a at Georgia. You never know. You know, so this is one of the only years that uh, in a long time where any any team in the top eight, I feel, could win a natty. A little parody in college football. Yeah, well, for sure. I, there, there's not – I don't think that uh, you can say that there's any uh, what you call overwhelming dominant team this year. Yeah. I would say the closest in my mind is Ohio State. Was was last year, was Georgia the overwhelming favorite most of the year? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that I mean, I'm in, the, in the numbers system, I'm saying. Last year? Yeah. Um, uh, let me look here real quick. I think it, I think I remember that, especially the way they started the year so dominant last year. I mean, and then Bama beat them in the uh, SEC champ, but for me, I mean, to me, it, I like all these other teams, 
you know, they have a shot. The The future is in front of them. The opportunity to play for a championship is right there if they can stay undefeated. To me, the two best teams in the country are Bama and Georgia. How far back you want to look last year uh, at uh, Georgia? Like, I mean, I would say around like week – Six, seven, week eight, week nine, right around in there. I think they were the overwhelming favorite. That's just in my gut. I'm not sure. Do you agree with that, Dustin? I mean, I would think they would have to be because of their quality of wins. I mean, you get into a playoff game. Let's look at it. I mean, Ohio State, Bama, Ohio State, Georgia. That's probably the best matchup. I'm going Bama and Georgia uh, if I'm making a pick for that game, you know? Yeah. Uh, I mean, that defense last year was downright historic, bro. I mean, yeah. you play, you know, with the college football playoff a total of 14 games, and, and teams only average 9.7 points per game. Yeah. That is absolutely great defense. In modern football, you know, that's so in cool. the SEC? Yeah. Yeah. Last last year after uh after after week six, uh -huh. or ac actually uh after game seven, uh it was Georgia, Michigan, o Oklahoma State, Oklahoma, Cincinnati, uh, MSU, and okay. SMU. Uh, Georgia was seven and zero, and their rating point average was twenty point nine. Wow! And you look at the chart you've got in front of you. We're at sixteen, almost seventeen. Yeah. And then Michigan was right behind them at seventeen. Wow! So that's that's uh, a a gap. Yeah. So that's a dominant team. Yeah. So and I like it because this year we're getting a lot more parity. And yeah, good. we are. Absolutely. So, great start. I'm loving it. We're about to wrap up here, but thanks for coming on, Dean. I mean, that was a lot of fun, and uh, we're going to have to have you on. You know, the season's starting to heat up now, and so I think now we're going to really start to enjoy this. Yeah, the numbers are not going to be as so weird uh, going forward now. You're going to see it get a little more clearer and uh, – there may not be as much to talk about <laughs> in the well, future as far as, gonna, as, far as the top two it, teams. Though. Yeah, that's when I'll enjoy it, though, because then we get to break it down, like, for real and talk about, like, you know, who's actually national championship contenders, and it's going to get good here. Yeah. Uh, you know, you filter out some of the pretenders, and then you get to the real contenders, so. Yes, for sure. Um, oh, by the way. You're yeah. my favorite. Uh, you, you're my favorite college football guest that we have on here, and I appreciate you coming on all the time. Well, thank you so much, Dustin. I appreciate that. You know, yeah. it's, uh, it's yeah. to me, it's uh, it's um, it's new. Uh, I've not done anything like this before. I've not been. Uh, I think Alec is the first one to really actually even pay any attention to this thing that I call <laughs> the numbers. Um, and it's just kind of been a private thing for a so very long time. And uh, to pull me into your world is a thrill for me, believe me. Um, yeah, and it's, it's uh, college football is awesome as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> well, yeah. Dean, I can, I can tell you, like, your passion for college football, like, you know, being like a little kid and watching college football, you know, growing up, your passion for it is a big reason. Like, because if you know, I grew up, I couldn't watch college football on Saturdays. Yeah. You know? And so I got to a certain age and I, you know, I was like, man, I'm going to get into college football. And I, your passion for it, I was like, this looks like a great game. And uh, I really appreciate it too. We love having you on the show. And uh, we love this numbers thing. Year one, following the numbers and following the season, it's going to be a great year. And we really appreciate Appreciate you coming on and taking the time. Yeah, I think, you know, uh, our blood runs uh, green like the field, doesn't it? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. And, well, like, yeah. That's, that's another reason why I appreciate you is because, like, you know, my favorite sport in the world 
and of all time is college football. I, I, you know, live and breathe college football. I obviously love the NFL too, but my knowledge is A1 on college football, and that's why I like talking it with you. Well, I appreciate it very much. Uh, it's nice to share uh, ideas and thoughts with those who really uh, are in the same boat. You know, it's <laughs> it's just a joy for me too. Yeah, and I'm learning from you too. Like I'm an NFL guy, but you guys are you know, uh, helping me learn the college game as well. So, and it's only right that you guys are so knowledgeable that we, you know, give you guys a platform to talk it too, because you guys have a lot of uh, good stuff to say, a lot of knowledge on, in the game. So I appreciate it, and great content as always. Thank you, Dean, for taking the time to come on. Thank you. Appreciate it very much, guys. Absolutely. Thanks, Dustin. Good stuff as always, man. Yeah, thanks. And, uh, you know, a good shout out to you, bro. You give us the opportunity to come on here and express our knowledge. And it's, yeah. it's really Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Appreciate you guys. Go Spartans. <laughs> Go Irish. <laughs> Go well, Irish. We, we sure pick them, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> Go Auburn Tigers. Yeah. <laughs> come on, Alex. Say it. Say it. What? Go Irish? I yeah, think go Irish. That's a big game. <laughs> Notre Dame, B BYU, can't wait. Yeah. Thanks, thanks, guys, for coming on. Don't forget to like, subscribe, leave a comment. Have a great week, guys. And peace out. All right.